What's going on everybody? Al here. This is my fragrance collection part two. Part two of many. I'm going to upload, I'm going to try to upload a, a video once a week showing you my collection. It's going to be all random. I'm going to show like 20 bottles from my collection. Nothing in any specific order. My collection's in a dark cabinet so I'm just going to take out like 20 bottles, line them up and show you guys. I know some people show all their creeds at once, all their Chanel's at once. I'm not going to do it like that. I might show one creed this week, maybe one next week. Who knows, it's going to be random, but you'll see all my fragrances eventually at the end when it's all said and done after so many videos. So with that said, let's get started. My fragrance collection part two. Here we go. This first fragrance is from the house of Cartier. This is Roadster. Now when I first smelled this fragrance, I couldn't stand it. I hated it. It turned my stomach. I was like, what the hell is this? Uh, I just, I smelled it once and I put it to the side. I moved on. After some time went by, I, you know, my journey continued to go. I've been, I smelled a lot of fragrances, doing my street scents, testing fragrances, my nose adapting. I said, let me revisit Roadster. I did. Thank God I did. I now love Roadster. I appreciate this composition. The intense mints with some real nice vanilla. I love this juice. If you blind bought this fragrance and you can't stand it, give it a chance. Put it to the side. Revisit it later on. Hopefully you'll get the same experience I did. This is Roadster from Cartier. Next, from the house of Guerlain, you have Tanka Imperial, one of the best almond cookie fragrance, fragrances out there. It's like an almond cookie with some spices, some cinnamon. I, it's very edible, smells are very edible. I love fragrances that smell edible, that have that almond vibe in there. Great for the cool weather. Guerlain, Tanka Imperial. Tanka Imperial. This next fragrance is discontinued, very hard to find. Every day that goes by, it gets harder to find. It's from the house of Gucci. This is Gucci Port on One. Very woody fragrance, a lot of woods. I've heard some people say it smells like pencil shavings. I don't really get that. I get some real nice deep woods. This one, Gucci did fragrances right back in the days. Gucci Port on One. Next, you have Serge Luten's Shergi. Shergi got me a lot of compliments in the past. Has a dry but sweet opening with some honey, some spices. Some cinnamon, like a hint of cinnamon in there. Again, has cinnamon. I love cinnamon in my fragrance. I love spices in my fragrances. And this composition is well done. A very nice blend from the house of Serge Luten's Shergi. Got a lot of compliments with this one. The next fragrance is from the house of Creed. Speaking of the devil, the house of Creed. I just mentioned Creed before. And here is Virgin Island Water from the house of Creed. One of the best coconut fragrances out there. I love this. Makes me feel happy. Warm weather, right? when it's warm outside, I put like five sprays of virgin olive water on, I feel great. You get the pina colada, the margarita, the coconut, great beach fragrance. And believe it or not, this does really well on my skin. Some people have longevity issues with virgin olive water. I'm one of the lucky ones. This performs really well on my skin. Next is a fragrance from the House of Amouage. I'm loving my Amouage more and more these days. This is Reflection Man has a fresh opening with a lot of florals and some spices. Some people say it smells like Limal from Jean Paul Gaultier. I really don't get that. Well, I do a little bit. I can see kind of a resemblance. To be honest, I got a compliment. Someone did say if I was wearing Limal. So I can kind of see a little bit of the Limal in there. But if you, if you want to compare it to Limal, I'm going to say it's a way better version of Limal. This is Reflection Man from the House of Amwash. Next is another Creed. This is Green Irish Tweed. This is a flacon when I did a split. I have a decan of this juice as well. Uh, I had to keep the flacon. It looks really nice. I got rid of most of them. I kept one of each. And this is one I kept. Green Irish Tweed. 500 ml flacon from the House of Creed. Next is a safe scent. Cheapy but goody. Azaro Chrome Legend. It's a cheapy but goody. I got a lot of compliments with this. I wear it when the weather's warm. It's got a dominant apple note in there. I love apple in my fragrances. If the fragrance has apple in it, I'm sold. And this does. Kind of synthetic, but the apple makes it, makes, makes it for me. And I do enjoy this juice. Azaro Chrome Legend. Cheapy but goody. Next, you have Prada Luna Rosa. Luna Rosa, I actually did a review on this. I did two street scents on this, part one and two. If you haven't checked them out, do so. This is a, has a lot of lavender in it. It's a great fragrance for the spring. Lavender makes you feel therapeutic, like relaxing. Has a mint kind of opening. It makes you feel chilling, but relaxing. Great for the spring. 
Prada Luna Rosa. Next we have Vera Wang for men. I used to own this bottle back in the days in 2004 when it first came out. Uh, I recently got this bottle. I wore it last week. It has a fruity opening, yuzu fruit in there. Like Isimiyaki, kind of smells like Isimiyaki in the opening. After a few minutes it goes in a whole different direction. You get a lot of leather and nutmeg with the yuzu in the background. This is a Vera Wang for men. Next we have Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris, this is the EDP. Has kind of a leather vibe in there as well with a lot of powder, very powdery fragrance. Can be unisex as well. I did a Street Sense on this also. I did a Street Sense on a lot of these fragrances actually. So that's Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris. Next fragrance I'm going to show you is a legend in YouTube fragrance community. Legend. It's been talked about a lot, a lot of hype on it these past few years. With good reason, it's amazing juice. It's from the house of Derry Mugler, and this is Amen Pure Malt. We all know Pure Malt has a boozy whiskey opening, <coughs> excuse me, boozy whiskey opening with the fruit, like a berries, a lot of berries, and the caramel has a DNA of the Amen in the background. Great juice. It talked about a lot with, for good reason, because it's great juice. Derry Mugler's Amen Pure Malt. Next fragrance is another discontinued goodie. This is from Valentino. This is a V from Valentino. This has like a sweet opening with some spices. A very classy scent. I do enjoy this. If you're going to go out, put a few sprays of V Valentino on and you'll get noticed. Next, another apple based fragrance. This is Original Penguin Rocks. Original Penguin Rocks. The bottle's green. Looks like an apple actually. It's very sweet, like sweet candy with a lot of apple. Like I said, if there's apple in there, I'm sold. Another cheapy but goody. If you like uh, apple, I highly recommend you check this one out. Next, we have Montal's Intense Cafe. Montal's Intense Cafe. This fragrance opens up with like fresh, like fresh coffee beans. Real nice grind of coffee beans. beans. That lasts for a few minutes, then you're going to get a real heavy rose with some vanilla. It's a beast of a fragrance. I really do enjoy this Montal Intense Cafe. Next we have Bond Number no. 9's Montauk. Bond Number no. 9's Montauk. Very fruity, fruity fragrance. A lot of fruits. Dominant blueberry in there. I really enjoy this fragrance. I really do. The more I wear it, the more I, I enjoy it. If this is the Andy Warhol edition. You see the bottle has the... Andy Warhol Sunset. It's hard to find now. Bond number nine and Andy Warhol uh, parted ways. So now, if you get Montauk, it's going to have uh, a different design. This is actually a tester. I don't have a cap for it. I wish I did. Let's turn it around so you can see the other side. Different color on the other side. I like this side better. This is Bond number nine's Montauk, the Andy Warhol design. Next, we have Prada. Amber Porome. I'm not sure if I showed this in part one. I might have, but if I did, I'm showing it again. Prada Amber Porome 1. I mean, Prada Amber Porome. I'm sorry. Prada Amber Porome. This fragrance is very soapy. A lot of soap. I hated this fragrance the first time I smelled it as well. I, f I felt like it smelled like soap from a soap dispenser, like in a restaurant or something. Like I, I was like, this doesn't smell right. But the more I wore it, the more I enjoyed it. Prada Amber Porome. Next, you have uh, Ralph Lauren Romance Silver. This is uh, fresh. It's got some spice. It's got, I think, uh, tobacco in there. Like a vodka kind of vibe. Like a boozy vibe. I had this back in the days. I recently got this. Just wanted to revisit it. It's not bad. Ralph Lauren Romance Silver. Moving on. Eccentric Molecules Molecule 01. This is a heavy... Sandalwood fragrance, smells like you have nothing on, but let me tell you, you're gonna get noticed. It, it, it lasts forever. It smells like you have nothing on, but you get noticed, trust me. And when you move around, you get whiffs of it. It's one note, ISOE Super, and it does its thing. A lot of sandalwood, eccentric molecules, molecule one. And last but not least, another Creed. This is Aventus, Creed Aventus, Flacone, 500 ml from a split, kept the Flacone. Gotta have it, gotta save it for the collection. Creed Aventus. Okay, that's it. There you have it. Part two of my collection. 
some goodies here. Part 3, I'll show some more Creed's probably if I get to them. Some Tom 4's, maybe some more Bond number 9's, so on and so forth. All right, if you have any questions, you can send me a message, send me an email, fragrancefanatic, the number one at yahoo.com. Shoot me an email. If you have any questions, you're going to talk about anything, you can comment down below, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys with part three real soon. Check it out. My fragrance collection, part two. Gucci Porome one, Valentino. Some good fragrances here. I'll see you guys later.